Welcome back to another chapter of diversity in urban art. My name is Alfredo Mujica. Um, today I'm going to talk about another three paintings, but before I do, I'd like to mention that um, I went to the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Madrid, Spain, which is the same school that Salvador Dali and Pablo Picasso also studied. Uh, actually, Sa Salvador Dali was, was uh, my strongest influence in the beginning. Uh, I actually did several copies of some of his paintings. To, there is, I believe, no better way of learning technique from a master than to try to reproduce what that master did in, in the moment of his creation. Uh, most artists pick one style and stick with it. I can't. Uh, maybe I'm too curious or I'm fickle. I don't know. You will be the judge of that. Uh, this is the Neo Cubist style. This painting actually came to me years ago in the uprisings in Tiananmen Square. You may remember that the students, university students, took over a big square in China and they had the army come down on them with tanks and everything. Uh, the famous uh, guy who stood in front of the tanks and stopped the tanks, you may remember that. Well, in the shots of these manifestations, I kept seeing posters of the Argentinian revolutionary who successfully did the revolution in Cuba. And suddenly it came to me, how is it fantastic that an Argentinian who did a revolution in Cuba, who inspired a revolution, inspired a whole generation, even here in the United States with the university takeovers uh, protesting against the war in Vietnam. Uh, you may remember a lot of those hippies were wearing t-shirts with Che Guevara on it. Well, I said, I have to do a painting of this incredible figure, world figure, that never really held a big post, was never president or dictator of a country, but who has be captured the imagination of people who are rising up around the world. Uh, and actually, years later, we see again, when the camera pans out on top of a, 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 a revolution in, 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 whether it be Cairo or or any of the other Arab countries, you'll see posters of Che Guevara people carrying him as a symbol of what they want. They want power to the people. And so I said, I have to do this painting. But how do you do a painting of someone who has transcended, transcended completely the mortality, the normal, uh, political mortality and has become a worldwide symbol. I can't do a portrait of a live man. I have to do it symbolically somehow. And so I thought, geometry, geometry. I will make pieces come together to form the look that that determined stare, that, that look that sees no fear and is ready to go to the end, even death. And there you have it. These are not eyes. These are spheres that are floating in space. This is not a nose. Actually, you see a teardrop Teardrop. Some say a teardrop for a fallen idol. Perhaps. His famous beret with the red star. His beard also is not a beard. As you can see, these are 
soft triangular shapes forming the illusion of a beard. Che, viva la revolución. Huh. Now, for my next painting, this is my, what I call my naturalist style. It's, 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 a, it's a style that I need to do because I love nature and nature is such a great challenge as a painter to put down, to get it so that when people look at it, they feel nature. We as a species have become pretty divorced from nature. We lived indoors and we roll around in these uh, metal cages with wheels, but we always enjoy looking at a piece of nature. To be able to capture nature is such a great challenge because it, you have to perceive it through your optic nerve into your brain and reinterpret it with your hands. Here is an example of this challenge. These stones are on the water but yet you feel the rays of the sun bouncing off them as they go deeper and deeper and darker and darker into the water and come out again at the bottom. The little bubbles, the decaying of the insect eating on the fringes of these fronds, these vegetation. I try to capture as much as my brain can perceive. Now, this painting, I call it Mediterranean Vision. This is my neo-surrealist style. In this style, the challenge is to put down, paint the visions that I get when I read art history when I read about ancient civilization. In this painting, we see examples of Greek sculpture, Roman architecture, the Mediterranean, symbolic of the birthplace of classical culture. In this painting, I tried to capture that vision, that classical vision of wonderful, beautiful art coming out more than 2,500 years ago out of the Mediterranean. But there's a hidden image. There's a hidden image here, which I like to always keep my eye on. And that image represents our ancient past, our evolution. We were once very primitive. We've been here for millions of years. In those millions of years of struggling for life, what kept us alive in many ways was an ability to be violent, to be strong, to be fearless in the fight for life. This hidden image represents the face of one of our ancient ancestors, a Neanderthal, a very primitive creature, a gorilla-like creature. It is here, it is almost life-size, but no one has seen it yet at first glance because it's hidden in a very special way. To be able to illustrate it, I'm going to take a print of it and show you the face of this ancient ancestor. Out of this pinnacle, this rock, this maybe volcano, flows water, a source into that Mediterranean of culture. This source comes from the mouth, the mouth of this primitive creature. You can only see it if you stand the painting on its side. Here we can see 
the mouth, nose area, and the characteristic very high brow bones and flat forehead that come this way. And so, this painting encapsulates a whole philosophy about evolution, nature, and art. Well, this is Alfredo Mujica thanking you for visiting with us again. And I hope to see you soon. Ciao.